When I wake up every morning, there is a tightness in my chest. My head is crowded with thoughts, and I feel a sinking feeling deep inside. Only when I get out of bed and get going with the day, do I feel alright. But why is this? Why don't I jump out of bed and celebrate that I get to live another day? Mornings are often a battle. We pour ourselves coffees with a stern face and go through the motions, and if asked how we are, we say we are fine. Fine? Is that all we are? Why are we not more thankful for waking up? Can we be more thankful for the life we have? The Stoics use a technique called negative visualization. This is where you imagine what it would be like to not be able to do something that you take for granted every day. Try this exercise. Close your eyes. Imagine that this is your life from now on. You are blind. Now open your eyes. Take in the world around you, the colors, the light. Most of us live with a gift every day that we are never thankful for. Look at someone you love. Imagine never being able to see that person. If you went blind right now, you would only have the memory of that person to hold on to. For Jean Dominique, who wrote the memoir The Diving Bell and the Butterfly, he could see people but not talk to them. His only means of communication was blinking his left eyelid. How often do we meditate on the fact that we can communicate with other people? What would it be like to be Jean Dominique, physically paralyzed with locked in syndrome, mentally aware of his surroundings, stuck lying on a bed, fed for a tube? The next time you eat something, savor it, because anything that you can do, there are people on this planet who can't do it. After reading his book, I started appreciating the simple act of walking. The Stoics also talk about how your life is the dream life. Whatever situation you are in, your health condition, your financial situation, there are people in the world who would dream to have your life. To have clean water, to have shelter from the weather, to have a family, to get out of bed every morning without assistance, to walk, to run. And there are people in the past who would look at your life as the dream life. You have sanitation, you have the internet, you have so many seemingly basic things that in the past were either rare or non-existent. It's important to think of every day as a bonus day. This way you will treat every day like it's your last. This doesn't mean clinging to everything, worrying and stressing about everything you're going to lose when the day is up. No, all you should do is look at everything in your day and imagine, if only for a moment, that it'll be the last time you watch a film, eat that meal, see that person, read that book. Doing this means every moment in your day is filled with joy, as you get pleasure out of seemingly simple things like brushing your teeth and taking a shower. We don't know if today will be our last. Nobody does. That's why we should be grateful for every moment that comes and every moment that passes. This last time meditation, again a stoic idea, can be applied to relationships. When someone leaves a room, don't assume they will come back in. When you say goodbye to someone, don't assume you will see them again. With these things in mind, we will have stronger relationships. We won't say things we don't mean, our actions and words will be more thoughtful. If we are about to say something unconsciously, we can take a breath and cut the link between our thoughts and our actions. Is what I am saying conscious? Do I believe that I will see this person again? But how can I be so sure? Many people have picked up the phone and found out that someone they love has died. Car accident, murder, cancer, heart attack. This could happen to anyone. Death doesn't just happen to other people. Your phone can be your meditation. Imagine it ringing and you pick it up. Your parents have died in a car crash. If you hadn't gone through negative visualization, you would grieve hard and long, your life could become a metaphorical car crash. But if you had meditated on the possibility beforehand, you would mourn but you wouldn't let the tragedy ruin your life, because you knew that everyone is mortal. You didn't believe your parents were going to live forever. Will you let this tragedy destroy you? One must think about the dead and what they would want. Would they want you to be miserable for the rest of your life? Don't take the people around you for granted unless you want to be swallowed by grief when death comes around. Negative visualization doesn't have to last long. Pepper your days with it at odd moments. As I write these words, I am thankful that I am able to coordinate my hands, and without thinking I can formulate words and sentences, and not only this, but I have two hands in the first place. Eckhart Tolle says that one of his favorite places to visit when he goes into a town or a city is the cemetery. One can meditate on the frailty of human existence, the long dark void that bookends our lives. You can think about the people who died and all the worries they had, 
All their dreams, all their ambitions, all reduced to the years of their birth and the years of their death. Walking around a graveyard, you can get a real sense of time. People who consider themselves important politicians, architects, lawyers, judges, most of their graves have collapsed, and their names are unintelligible. All the money to erect these gravestones is no match for time, change, and decay. With these thoughts in mind, we don't have to take the challenges we face in life so seriously. All we have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to us. And treat every day like it's a bonus day. Every moment will be richer, and the actions we take will be necessary. Don't waste away your moments, because this might be the last video you ever watch.